30 projections in 30 days going into the 2024 regular season for the New York Mets as we continue our month-long deep dive into the Mets 40-man roster. Today, we talk about the big bopper in the lineup, Pete Alonzo. As one of baseball's most prolific sluggers, Alonzo put up another monstrous power campaign in 2023, slashing 217, 318, 504 with 46 home runs and a 121 weighted runs created plus in 658 plate appearances. Although the production wasn't completely at his career level, Alonzo's ability to carry a massive portion of the Mets offense has yet to slow down. As a perennial top 10% in average exit velocity, max exit velocity, hard hit rate, barrel rate, and many stat cast expected metrics. Alonzo isn't just the Mets' top offensive weapon, he is the Mets' offense. With contact rates dipping as to his usual numbers last year, the home run or bust level did raise in 2023, but Alonzo was still able to maintain discipline, surprisingly landing in a career best percentiles in walk rate and chase rate while also maintaining power production and driving in 118 runs alonzo posted a batting average of balls in play of just 205 one of the worst in all of baseball whether he's poised for a monstrous year in 2024 the spotlight is even brighter than ever for alonzo this year set to become a free agent after the 2024 season alonzo's future with the mets remains a wait and see, with both sides having interest to keep Alonzo long-term in Queens. Represented by the high roller himself, Scott Boris, Alonzo will be entering a 29-year-old season, almost certain to hit the open market this winter. Everyone's losing their shit. Will he sign? Will he sign? We'll keep it on the field. One of the best power hitters in all of Major League Baseball. He's carried the Mets offense with no absolute protection any time in his Mets tenure, and still ending up consistently hitting at least 30 homers every single season. Again, all the pressure on the world because, again, pending UFA, and will he have an Aaron Judge type season to say, hey, hit 60, 70, does he top his 53 home run year? We'd love that, but again, it's just going to count more in his bank account after the season. He is the Mets offense. Again, they were not interested in adding any supplementary power in the offseason, saying, you know what, we'd rather have defense and run prevention guys instead of adding protection for Pete Alonso or any just extra power bet any other position so again the offense banks around him he's been able to carry it so far can he hit another level it's all wait and see with and in a walk here you know he's going to be even more motivated to break even more records trying to get that payday it was another season of a bunch of home runs and you know that was just kind of same old same old for Pete as far as what he does year in year out uh played a ton of games yet again so just a, a normal Pete Alonso season and, you know, the thing I'm curious about is does, like Andrew said, does he have a crazy year because it's a walk year? And then that just makes the free agency thing all the more interesting. Uh, but, you know, I, I expect another a bunch of home runs for him again, just kind of being the normal Pete that we see every year. He is the offense. He goes where we all go. I mean, if he doesn't hit, nobody else is going to be hitting in this lineup at any sort of production that he has for the last five years. As for my projections with him, I'm going to tell you right now, I would not be surprised if he blows these completely out of the water. We just know how important he is to this lineup. And again, for his long-term future with the team, I'm not worried about it as of right now. I'm worried about this coming season, what is going to be going on with this team and seeing you know how that fits in and everything. Uh, I'm not worried about Pete Alonso offensively. I'm not worried about anything because he's never given me a reason to worry whatsoever. Now, could it have been a little bit better last year? Maybe. You know, he had the little wrist injury that kind of screwed him up a little bit. If he did not get hurt and he played all 162, there's a strong possibility where you saw 55 home runs last year. Now, obviously, the batting average and balls in play, like I said, 205, very, very low as compared to what he has done for his career. So, obviously, I'm expecting that to even out, giving you still 46 home runs out of that total with a, such a horrible batting average with balls in play. You hope that that evens out and maybe he surpasses the 50 total, of course, and, you know, maybe he goes even beyond 
in a free agent year, which he is poised to have a career year. And that's what we hope. I really hope, again, like Steve Cohen has said, he hopes that he makes it very, he makes it very difficult for him because if he's hitting, most of the guys in this lineup are hitting and the Mets are doing well. So I want to remind everybody that projections are not predictions. They are benchmarks of a player's current specific percentile outcome based on predictive data and results. For my projections, I decided to go with, in my opinion, the current 75th percentile outcome, although usual player projections are from the 50th percentile outcome for a player, I personally wanted to have kind of a median between sustainability and upside. It also gives you a decent look as to who I'm high on and who I am low on going into the 2024 season. As for Pete Alonso, 668 plate appearances, slashing 247, 343, 522, with 44 home runs, 106 runs batted in, and 133 weighted runs created plus, and a 3.2 wins above replacement. And you hit his normal total of 140 and 100, but a low 100, only 106 after back to back seasons of at least 120, 106. 675. Percentile outcome. <laughs> that means that his 100th percentile outcome on this scale would probably be 125, if you want comfort. Even with that being said, you could see that number because, again, teams should just wake the hell up. Same thing with Aaron Joe, oh, now Lester and Aaron Judge's case now. Walk him. Make anyone else in, there, in this lineup beat you. And if teams would ever wake the hell up, I could see those numbers taking a dip, but... You know, teams seem to don't want to do that, and Pete's made him pay throughout his career, and I could see, again, 44 homers. That's kind of the the minimum to an extent. But, again, I could see the RBI numbers coming down if teams realize. And if he ha let's say he starts off hot. If he goes starts raging hot, teams realizing, okay, there's nobody behind him. Make them beat me instead of the polar bear. 40 to 100, that's kind of what we all kind of pencil in. First on the team in WRC plus again, he is the whole offense. It makes sense. Batting average higher than you know two fifty. That's kind of what good Pete Alonso was around that two forty two fifty area. So again, forty a hundred and a one thirty WRC plus. That's the bare minimum you're getting out of him. It's a pretty good bare minimum. Believe it or not, projection systems you got the lowest at thirty seven from Zips and the highest is forty two from Debat. So. I was pretty generous in terms of uh, that. But again, that's 50 percentile outcomes. This is 75. Again, I am curious to see how the Mets construct this lineup under Carlos Mendoza because I do think that will kind of determine also what Pete's numbers are, uh, whether he's batting second or batting third or if they're going to be batting fourth again or something like that. And also who's batting behind Pete Alonso, like we've said. Will there be actual protection? Because, you know, if Vientos actually – pulls it together or Alvarez bang behind whatever instead of the guys that we saw last year. I, I don't know. I just find that there are a couple of factors that are for Pete this year to ha make him have a better year than last year. Again, I think he's going to be really motivated. You know, I, I don't know if these projection things take like the personal thing into consideration when it comes to, you know, because you can't put a number on that. So it probably kind of breaks the analytics a little bit, kind of makes the nerds and robots malfunction a little bit. Uh, when you have those like other factors kind of going uh because we've seen it time and time again in all sports the guy in the walk year they just put up these insane numbers trying to cash in uh, trying to prove people wrong things like that so uh, i think a very motivated pete alonzo is a scary hitter to face so um that's why i do hope the mets kind of can construct this lineup in a way that he is protected so that teams aren't avoiding him i will tell you one thing if you were to put pete alonzo in the two spot easily he's breaking 700 plate appearances this year. Let's just say he makes it very difficult for Steve Cohen. He outlasts all of these projections. He gives you 50 homers. He gives you 130 runs batted in. What would you think his price tag is going to be in free agency? Boris Land's probably going to be, whoa, 300 million. What he really is worth is 225, 240. What's, he, what's Boris going to be aiming for? 300, 350. Again, judging in type deal. What his true value is, is not that. But it also takes one stupid team to throw a stupid offer and it ruins everything. But I think Boris definitely going to this year is going to be looking for judge type money or face of the franchise type money is what Boris is looking for. Is he worth that? That's a different discussion. If you were to go on the scale of fan graph, you're currently looking at Pete Alonso of an AV of about 20 
$3.3 million a year. So if you're looking at AV, he's probably going to get a lot more than that. Um, but that's kind of what you're looking at before this. If that's the case, he would have. he's getting quite a bit more than what Matt Olson got, which I don't totally agree with. Like the number I had, I had him like eight one seventy five because Olson was eight one sixty eight. So I know that guy's always trying to like top the previous guy. Um, so for him to be a few million over, he would be getting like a a pretty big contract because that's the tough thing is that like you can talk about what Boris tries to get for his big clients and things like that, big power hitters, but first basemen just don't get paid like the way outfielders and middle infielders do. So I think that's the other tough part is that, you know, there's only been so many first basemen we've seen get the big contracts recently that it's, it's kind of like, are you comparing first base or are you comparing just overall like great hitters? So that would be between Olsen and Goldschmidt. That'd be a full. For ranking first baseman, obviously Harper is now technically first baseman. But but Harper was paid as an outfielder. As an outfielder. But, yeah, so take Bryce, even though he's the best first baseman. Throw him away. Freddie's at 27. Goldie right now is at 26. And then Olsen at 22. But also, Goldschmidt's deal was only five years. I'm mm-hmm. just, again, you know what Boris is looking at. Boris is going to want to top that Freeman number. That's what he's going to want. Mm-hmm. Either way, it's a huge year for Alonzo. I don't like the sight of challenging him and seeing if he can do it in his walk year. But you know what? At this current point, hired Scott Boris. He's got the high roller. He's going to go to free agency, and we're going to see what's going to happen. I'm not worried about his future with the Mets. As of right now, Pete Alonzo, always counting on him to have a big year. We're going to need another one from him. 